Welcome to the broadcast. This is a ministry of Reformation Bible Puritan Baptist Church, of which I am the elder bishop. And one of the purposes of the church is not only to preach the gospel to whosoever will, but to expose the Jesuit papacy as the font of evil in the earth, and that it has ruined historic white Anglo-Saxon Protestant Western civilization, as well as included all the liberal Roman Catholics in their annihilation. So we wish to expose the Jesuit order, and today we have a very special program. I have with me one of my advisors, Brother Walt Williams, who you hear every Wednesday and Thursday. But also I, will, I have with me Victor Perillo. Victor Perillo is a playwright in Hollywood, and he has put together what is called the Lambert Chronicles, which you will find utterly fascinating, and this is the topic of for which we have this special broadcast today. So, Brother Walt, welcome to the broadcast. Glad to be here, Brother. Thank you for inviting me. And, Victor, are you with us now? No, Victor will be calling in. And uh, he should be calling in shortly. So, meantime, uh, what I'll do is just give a brief introduction. I was uh, sent an email by Mr. Perillo, American Army Major, in World War II named Warren Lambert. Warren Lambert was a judge at Nuremberg. Warren Lambert spoke both German and English. And so the Jesuits at Nuremberg, in the person of Jesuit Edmund Walsh, and one of his uh, agents at a Georgetown University that was completely in charge of all the translation work there at Nuremberg, so they could censor out everything that had to do with Pope Pius XII and the Jesuit involvement in the SS and the Eurasian Jewish Holocaust. This Mr. Warren Lambert had his own private notes and diary, and it was recently discovered by his grandson in an attic. And uh, these notes fully expose Pius XII as the major Jew baiter and hater of the, the impetus behind the Eurasian Jewish Holocaust. And of course, Pius XII's immediate master, Jesuit Superior General of Vladimir Lerachowski. But uh, Walt, you had called and talked with Victor. And, well, Victor, you're here. Maybe it's, I don't know where it's from, but. Did I try on another number? or? Um... No, this number's fine. But if you're listening to the radio in the background... No, I'm not. Turn it down. No, I'm not. Okay. All right, well, hopefully it'll get resolved. I don't know if it's on your end, Walt, or whatever. But... All right. Okay, well, Victor, welcome to the broadcast. And uh, I was giving a brief introduction how you sent me an email concerning uh, Warren Lambert. So why don't you just uh, take over and tell us about... Warren Lambert and his grandson that you met in these, uh, this tremendous diary come into your hands. About uh, nine, ten years ago, I had the opportunity to meet uh, uh, Andy Woodowis, who was the grandson of uh, Warren Lambert, Major Warren Lambert. And Major Warren Lambert was one of the eight judges elected by uh, and assigned by after the, during the Holocaust, after the Holocaust. And uh, for years, uh, the, the uh, collection and so forth of his notes, his diaries, and uh, his personal records uh, was kept at uh, Hazel Lambert's home in, in Michigan. And uh, I'll be to, uh, to the grandson until one day he, he discovered it. Uh, he had the presence of mind to... Um, take the uh, collection and get it approved and get it authorized and, and uh, he you know could have done uh, incredible things with it it's estimated to be worth over five million dollars and he took it and and um, donated it to the Zeller Holocaust Museum this is uh, truly uh, the grandson of a great man and certainly the blood runs in the family what is fascinating about the collection and about the man is that he took meticulous notes uh, during the trials, uh, notes that clearly, specifically indicate the presence of the uh, gas chambers and so forth, and the, that nobody could deny because these were the testimonies given by uh, the, the, the SS officers when they were on trial. He also encouraged the survivors 
uh, at the camps to write their own testimonies and documents, and all of this was in the collection. Uh, in addition, there are hundreds of pages of handwritten notes that he took at the infinitesimal time that the trial was going on, uh, and in his handwriting. So it's so amazing that it's kept <laughs> all these years, and it was a question of providence for, um, not a question, but it was providence that, that uh, Mr. Woodowis came across this collection and brought it forward to us. And uh, and he he did it diligently, and, and he's been patient with it to, to get it out. I met him and transferred all the notes into a theatrical movie, a, a, a play for the stage, a docudrama, and a book, as well as a trailer and so forth. Now, reason, now you're, a, you're a Hollywood playwright, correct? Well, I was, my background is all in the theater from... New York, and I've done nothing else but show business. I was an agent for 20 years. I was Gary Coleman's agent. The young boy I just, uh, died last year, the, uh, the child actor from Different Strokes. Uh, I know the power of drama, and, and, um, and you know, we could write books and so forth, and when you see the characters uh, live on stage or on film, and uh, in a te television movie of the week, and you see them talking, and we bring to life three different storylines. Uh, and I talk about what this man was at the time he lived and what was going on in that era, was that there were three storylines. There was not only was Warren Lambert, a man who came from, he's every man, he worked his way up to, to the, the knowledge he had. He was not a lawyer or a judge. He worked, he studied the Uniform Code of Military Justice while he was in the service. He was fluent in German, and he was outspoken, and he took notes from the beginning. His wife is just as much a hero because she, she was with Hazel Lambert, was with him throughout the whole trials. She, uh, through the years, gave Andy notes on... on um, their life together and what was going on in Germany. And she was an amazing character. So that the, the the notes that I put together for this piece, this project, uh, come from all the sources that were in the collection, as well as as from the the conversations that Andy had with her with his grandmother, and uh, and put it all together. And and you know the term uh, all the dots connect and they, they always do so what what is it that's fascinating about this story is it just another holocaust story or is it about the life and times that this man lived in to be outspoken and to take notes so that we 60 years later can put the dots together and take a look at what he's what, what he did and what he recorded so there's three storylines going on i talk about the people that did not come to the rescue of the jews that could have and uh, the Vatican, the Jesuits, one, and the and the the other storyline is what happened at the State Department. And this is not a question of was there anti-Semitism in the State Department or was there anti-Semitism uh, with Pacelli, the Pope, Pius XII. Uh, there was. And when the audience leaves this theater, whether they see it in the play or they see it in a the movie theater. They watch the docudrama. It hopefully will inspire all of us to say, you know, when we see evil, we have to speak out, and we have to say it. And we saw what Lambert did, and we saw that the voice of of truth can hardly be heard above a whisper, but the, the sound of evil is broadcast on the loudspeakers of, of uh, Satan. You know, I mean, every time somebody talks and speaks out uh, about the, what the reason why these, Hitler was aided and abetted and the people that did it, it's silence. It's a very difficult project to get produced. And of the course. reason is... <laughs> and the Jesuits are, as you know, the Jesuits are running Hollywood, and that's one of their great secrets. They don't want the world to know that they were the masterminds behind the Eurasian Jewish Holocaust. The, 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 there's no question about it, and, and uh, there's, there's no question about that. I will tell you that uh, 
in lieu of what you said about, uh, and I'm out here and I'm, I'm, you know, facing that battle all the time. Uh, it it is amazing the people that read it for the first time who are not the executives at the film companies, but the the in, in a second position, and are very excited, and then three or four days later call back oh. in their voice. <laughs> We, we, no, I, I understand that completely, as I know, mentioned we, before, we when, when I was talking with a Japanese correspondent about the Jesuits being in charge of detonating the uh, atomic bombs on the ground. They were assembled on the ground, and Curtis LeMay dropped the magnesium flash bombs to make it look like it were atomic detonations, but the detonations took place on the ground by the Jesuits overseen by Pedro Rupe. Uh, she completely, she was happy about it, wanted to interview me, and all of a sudden, nope. No. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, there's so these, yeah, so that's one way we know we're on target. <laughs> no, we're on target, and, and you know what? I think we may have discussed this, but you know, why is it that when somebody tells the truth, uh, you see, we are labeled as, uh, a, a, you know, uh, people not too bright, not cases. Um, uh, you know, conspiracy theories, theories. See, the, the truth, the truth is the truth. You know, it, it, it is what it is. The truth is the truth. It never disguises itself as not. Right. It never disguises. It is, it is, it is there. And, and the difference is, is that when you tell the truth, you, you have so many different, you know, I did a lot of research on this, uh, and, and as you do. And, and uh, you know, in your work, but it is amazing when you and, and, and you come away. And, 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 and another on. example of this of persecuting these authors is Robert Stinnett. Robert Stinnett wrote the great work of Day of Deceit, uh, the truth about FDR and Pearl Harbor. And this was a brilliant man, is a brilliant man, who was there at Pearl Harbor at the time, and he proved that the Office of Naval Intelligence helped engineer and organize the Japanese invasion of Pearl Harbor, and uh, which ultimately resulted in the justification for the U.S. entering World War II. So he was shouted down, and we can expect this. But I have some questions, uh, Victor, with regard to your manuscript. Now, you've put together a play called the Lambert Chronicles. Right. And uh, is it in production now, or no, how's, how are you no, coming no. with it? I've finished the script mm -hmm. and the, the book and the movie script. I've finished the theater script, the movie script, and, and the book. And it's all the story of, of, uh, of Warren Lambert. And uh, these days, you know, you, you, it's, it's not the old Hollywood where you could sit down with producers that knew how to read scripts. You know, today, if it's not, if the project is not put together and they're, they're not attachments to it, they don't read it. If it's not formatted according to uh, certain uh, software, you know, they don't read it. Uh, and um, I've been in this industry a long time when I sat at NBC and sold seven movies of the week with people that understood what you were talking about. Uh, the days of, um, you know, Norman Lear and David Susskind from the years of past and the 50s are gone. However, uh, I believe that if the story is told in a little theater in, in, uh, in uh, anywhere, in, in Michigan, in Philadelphia, that it will get such uh, press that it is so outrageously controversial. And controversy, as you know, you know, gets attention and gets people talking. So uh, mm -hmm. I, I can't sit here when people say to me, you know, Vic, you're, you're writing about an issue that you're talking about the Jesuits. You're talking about these people that are very powerful. Are you, are you fearful? Mm -hmm. The nature of this script is about a man that was not fearful. And it was about the fact that we were complicit and we were complacent in the 30s and the 40s when all of this was going on in, in, in Germany. We, we were uh, fearful. And nobody, nobody t uh, spoke about this. The New York Times, the Chicago Tribune, the Chicago newspapers. Any time they were reporting the, the, any news that was coming out of Germany about the the, the uh, concentration camps, it was buried on page fifty and sixty. You know, uh, and largely. Right. Well, the, re the reason the reason for that is is that the Council on Foreign Relations was and is today in control of the press. 
And the Council on Foreign Relations is the trusted third party of the Archbishop of New York. And so during the 30s, at least as of 1939, uh, Francis Spellman was the Archbishop of New York, and well, he, he is rightly titled, rightly titled as the American Pope in work, the American Pope written in 1988. So what I'd like to see is this. I would like to see your script put into a movie, this is the beginning of a three-part play, a three-part movie series that will make the producer hundreds of millions of dollars in conjunction with telling the truth around the world. Isn't that wonderful? This will, fir this will first expose the papacy, the Jesuit order, and the SS having carried out the Eurasian Jewish Holocaust. And by the way, I find it intriguing that the Latin uh, phrase, sedis sec sectorium, the Holy See, is the Latin phrase that the SS used on their lapels. Yes, isn't that amazing? They're that, wearing the uniform. Fantastic. That was that, a wonderful that, point you brought out in, a, your, yeah, in your that's script. In the script. The next Where is the source for that, brother? What's that? Yeah. Where is the source of, of the SS? Well, uh, I got it that, from, I got it from uh, several sources. Uh, um, this, this one came from, um, I believe it's in, the, I don't know the, the exact book I got it out of. But there were some, inter I don't have it here in front of me, I'm sorry to tell you that, but because I had like seven, eight books that I read it from. And it was confirmed, because I looked up the, when I did research on this uh, story, uh, I, I, I had several dictionaries I was working out of, and one was the, one of the original Latin translations of studies of, of that term, Sicorum. So a lot of this I came on my own. You know, and then it was verified in in one or two books that I read. And I'm sorry, I, I do have source material, but I don't have that that one available. But uh, well, you know, as I, I might add, mm -hmm. that remember the SS was born out of the Freikorps. The Freikorps was born out of Bamberg. Okay. Bamberg was never bombed in World War II, and the Archbishop of Bamberg was was overseen by the Jesuits Church of St. Michael, I believe. St. Martin, Church of St. Martin, of Saint there Martin, in right. Bamberg. So the SS was born out of Bamberg, out of the Archbishop von Hauck, who was there in Bamberg. So there's no doubt that the SS was patterned after the Jesuit order. It used Jesuit uh, symbology, and of course, Skull and Bones is one of their symbols, too. Right, but right. As, as I was saying, this is the first part in a three-part movie. The first part shows that the Jesuits were behind the Eurasian Jewish Holocaust. Hitler, as well as Stalin, working together, overseen and financed by FDR and Churchill and the whole Anglo-American power structure. Secondly, after this, we're going to show how Cardinal Spellman was the kingpin in the Vatican rat lines coming into the U.S., bringing in approximately 20,000 Nazis after the war. It's when we show this, then, we will also bring you up to the Kennedy assassination because uh, Francis Cardinal Spellman oversaw the entire assassination using his Knights of Malta, like uh, Henry Robinson Luce and John McCone and Carthur de Loach, third in command of the FBI. I have it all in my book. And then once we show that Cardinal Spellman was behind the assassination of Kennedy, his own Roman Catholic Knight of Columbus, then this will morph into 9-11 and show that Ed, Edward Cardinal Egan was the overseer of 9-11 using his Knight of Malta, George J. Tennant, head of the CIA and on the National Security Agency. It's the same organization. It never changes. And this play would be, I believe, the first of a series of three that would shake and rock the world. Well, I think within the context of, of, of the, the, the script the way it is, you know, I, I certainly have to pay homage to to to, to Warren Lambert and and to the story that uh, and to his grandson and uh, in telling the story. Don't forget, there the, he's the gentleman that came to me to, to 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 write this. So certainly we have to focus there. I I agree with you on everything you said. Uh, I never saw this to be a one one part uh, series. I think that the story alone on Spellman. And on on uh, the death of Kennedy, it, I, I wouldn't. I, I would take that separate, and oh, yes, that's that the story in of itself. That's a that's a three act. That that's yeah. a three act play, and give it the the integrity that it needs. I'm not, I'm not yes. saying that I wouldn't, you know, mention yes. it in here, because mm -hmm. I, look. 
Uh, but, we, but you could mention Spellman there because you're Oh, no, he's, he's, in, he's in here. He's, 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 the, the scenes I have with him within the script is, has, has him going to, uh, uh, to Rome to, to, you know, one time he left with the gold. That they, they were talking, they made reference to the fact that he would leave the, the Vatican with big boxes, heavy boxes that he would have to have people uh, carry out, you know. Uh, you know, he... He was introduced to um, and, and encouraged to to to, to be the, uh, the 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 American Pope in a way by Mother Pascolina at the beginning, but then yes. she lost uh, all faith in him later on when she found out, you know, what his what his character was. Uh, what, what is great, Eric, well, about? Well, well, Mother Pascolina was involved in. Uh... And, and lots of the shenanigans with Pius the Twelfth, and when he died, they kicked her out of the Vatican. Well, they kicked her out of the Vatican. He had a look, long time. They, they, uh, the, 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 the French cardinal Tisserman, who was who, uh, mm-hmm. who was in our uh, our script, uh, mm-hmm. took on the Pope many times. You, you know, Eric, this is the first time anybody's ever gone backstage <laughs> into the halls of the Vatican during the time of the Holocaust. Yes. See the yes. way these people spoke. Amen. Well, Victor, we have to take a break here, okay. but we'll be right back after station identification here at Liberty Radio Love, Biblical Truth and History and Prophecy with my advisor, Walt Williams, and also with my special guest, Victor Perillo, here on Liberty Radio Live. With Eric John Fels, Biblical Truth and History and Prophecy, back with my advisor, Walt Williams. And Walt, just feel free to question or chime in whenever you want to. And I'm with my special guest today, Victor Perillo, who is a playwright and has written the Lambert Chronicles uh, depicting the life of Warren Lambert, who was a great American hero who told the truth about what happened at Nuremberg. Okay, please. Uh, Victor, I'd like to ask you, are you aware of Joseph Kennedy uh, silencing um, the producers, the movie magnates in, in uh, Hollywood, uh, cautioning them not to speak out against Adolf Hitler uh, before World War II, our entry into World War II? I, uh, and, I'm uh, aware you, of it. Ahead. I never did any research on it uh, when I was researching this, this project. Yeah, he was the one of the three men who caused the stock market crash in, in 29. Mm-hmm. And he ran Hollywood. He basically financed and guided whatever went on there mm-hmm. and restricted uh, and encouraged only uh, information uh, that would provoke the American people uh, into right wing fascism, which is what they're doing even today. Mm-hmm. Uh, it hasn't changed. That's interesting because um, this brings up, this leads right into what I wanted to talk with uh, Victor about, and those are certain personages of the place. To begin with, we have Cardinal Spellman, which is infamous, who is infamous. But Cardinal Spellman was advised by and overseen by Edmund Walsh. And we cannot overestimate the influence and power of this singular American Jesuit at Georgetown University in Washington. Jesuit Edmund Walsh was at the Treaty of Versailles, making sure the Germans were slam dunked and so enraging them, blame putting the whole war guilt on them, that it guaranteed war in 20 years. Walsh was there. The other thing is, Edmund Walsh was also in Moscow from 1922 to 24, uh, who was the former negotiator between the Vatican and the Bolsheviks. I cover this extensively in my book. Walsh was there for approximately two years. And there, in 1922, he appointed Joseph Stalin to be secretary of the Communist Party, which he remained so until his death in 1953, or his poisoning, I should say. So Walsh was intricately involved in the Bolshevik Revolution, intricately involved in the uh, Treaty of Versailles, and intricately involved with FDR, because as soon as FDR was, quote-unquote, elected president, one of the first things was, was recognize the USSR, and he did it in the White House, and sitting right next to him was Jesuit Edmund Walsh. So Edmund Walsh is a key player in this, and he is a personal friend of Robert Graham, and also Robert Lebeer. Robert Lebeer, this Jesuit Robert Lebeer, was a personal confessor of Pius XII of Pacelli, 
and Robert Graham was also intimately involved with Le Beer, and these two Jesuits, in conjunction with two other Jesuits, censored all of the Third Reich history, the war history that is in the Vatican, and has placed it out of reach, I think, until uh, 2050, something like that. But these there are four Jesuits, two of them, Robert Le Beer and Robert Graham, censored this history, and our friend Warren Lambert has done much to overturn this terrible censorship. Well, now you, 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 you're fighting the cause, and is exactly what I'm saying is because Warren Lambert uh, spoke out. Uh, his wife spoke out. Uh, he took the notes. There's no denying the notes. Uh, the, the roles in this story of uh, Tisserant, the Pascalina, you see the list there, these were all real people. They didn't come from my imagination. And, right. and, 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 and by the, the way, as we mentioned, Sumner Wells was a member of the CFR, uh, along with Cordell Hall, uh, CFR. Yeah, Cordell Hall and, uh, and Robert Reams. But here, here's the, uh, the issue here, is that we make so much reference when we talk about Holocaust films and, and Holocaust, and you, you mentioned Hollywood here. I don't believe that this, this and I know it's not going to be produced out of any producer out of here. It's going to be a foreign producer or somebody in uh, Canada or New York, and somebody that, that has the guts that Warren had. And... Um, you know, to speak out at the time that if anybody even said anything negative about the vicar of Christ on earth, you know, they would be stoned. Uh, and, and certainly you wouldn't say anything against the government. And and people talked in whispers back then, you know, and uh, the slang word for the Jews, you know, was used on the street all the time, you know. So you're right, the press was silenced by spelling. You mean kike? Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. And, and, uh, and he... Yeah, it's true. You know, in, in back then, you know, people were were open about. So there was a lot of, you know, there was a lot of people pontificating here and saying, you know, how sorry they were for everything. And and then under their breath, they were cheering uh, Hitler on. But Hitler had friends. You know, he had he had aides. He had aides in powerful liturgical places. He had them in the government. You know, and they all were were sitting here, and that's what's so great about this about this story and this script is that we have one man, one man who asked questions. And he, he wasn't the only man back then. I mean, there were uh, uh, others that that spoke out, but we have one man. So when we see his story, and and we 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 at the end we say, well, well, Vic, you know, in his notes they they kept saying, you know, he never said anything. He never took on the Pope. He never did that. I said, look, I'm talking about the time in which he lived. I have dramatic license as a writer to write about the time in which he lived where people would be scared to death to take notes and write things, you know. And uh, and he did it. And he did it. And he exposed the most vicious organization in the world, a group, what, I don't know what you, what you could call them, but he exposed the Jesuits. He exposed them. He doesn't beat up on the church. He beats up on the individuals in the church. And and we're telling three stories here. But so he does write of the Jesuits. Well, he writes. He writes. He makes reference. You know, it wasn't just him that I got the information from. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, his wife uh, Hazel was one of the very first if, if, if people with the go to the jail for the bitch of Buchenwald. Oh yes, I remember her. And mm -hmm. and uh, and she confronted her. And you know, we had uh, William. The attorney William Denson, who wrote, wrote a book as well about his, he, he was the lawyer, American lawyer that, that tried uh, everything. And when she got freed, he just gave up. He got so pregnant, and in, in, uh, in some American senators protected her. She eventually killed herself in, in a prison in Germany, but they got her back there. But when you hear about the ritualistic activities that went on in the concentration camps, that that. The Blessed Mary statue was outside of the the, 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 the the concentration camps, and when Eisenhower came, he ordered them all removed. Is that right? right? And, the Blessed and, Virgin Mary was outside the concentration yeah, camps. Yeah, outside the door. Was, 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 was Dachau one of them? No, Dachau wasn't. I believe it was Nuremberg. 
to find, incidentally, they did find relics, uh, religious relics, that the German SS officers allowed, in one case, I know this were from pr the American prisoners, to hold on to. And in our script, when the SS officers are being questioned at the trials, of them, and you know, who, to whom you, 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 uh, you have reverence to, and they said, of course, it was Heil Hitler, they were screaming that out all the time. And then he makes reference when also the Church, the Church of Rome. So, you know, it, it's, it is in there and indicated there, but this story is, has so many complexities to it. You know, and you're right, it can't be told in one hour length film. You know, it would have to be, if it were on HBO, it would have to be a series. But it's going to take a lot of guts on the part of a producer. Uh, well, you tell that producer, whoever he is, that I'm, Walt and I would be happy to help him. Well, you know, we're, we're, and, and, the, and the other thing is, I want to mention some of these personages that you yeah. mm -hmm. bring out in your play. play. Right. Number one, you mentioned Myron Taylor. Yes. Myron Taylor was a knight of Malta, a multi-millionaire. And he was also a member of the Council on Foreign Relations. Mm -hmm. He was FDR's secret ambassador to Rome when it was illegal to be legally ambassador until that arch criminal and traitor, Ronald Reagan, formally recognized the sovereign state of Vatican City in 1984 and made it legit to send an ambassador to Rome. But you have Myron Taylor, you have Sumner Wells. Right. Sumner Wells wrote a book on world government called... Uh, Union Now, I believe. Right. And it was all about world government. But he never mentions the Pope. No. Just world government. No, yeah. no, no. Right. Reform rabbi here to his own Jewish people. Mm -hmm. Barry, Barry Chamish has much to say about him in his, his great works. And also Ben Heck, yes. a Hollywood, Jewish Hollywood playwright, in his book Perfidy, talks about the treason of Stephen Weiss, how Stephen Weiss could have done much more to help to get the European Jews out of Europe and into the U.S., but he refused to do it and sent them to their deaths. Another book uh, on this topic is called The Scared and the Doomed by Nuremberger, and he also mentions Rabbi Stephen Weiss. Yes. So you have mentioned some well, very, some, very key players. I've had some mixed feelings, uh, uh, mixed reports on him from some, uh, as you say, some people that have read this and said, you know, that he, uh, with, there's a, only one mention of him, it, with, there's one scene with him, but this was before when he did make an attempt to meet with uh, Wells and Hall. He had, he had one conversation with him, but I think what you're talking about happened after that in the, in the yeah. in turn turn coat on everybody he probably did yeah. uh, what I you know they have an out they, yeah, they have an outward policy the outward policy is to want to say we, we want to save the Jews like which Rabbi Wise did but this inward policy is really not to because there was a secret deal if the Jewish leaders would aid and abet the Nazi Holocaust they would be given the Latin Kingdom of Jerusalem or Israel. And so that's why we see the Masonic Jewish Labor Zionists working in conjunction with the Nazis during World War II because they would be the leaders of the Pope's revived Latin Kingdom of Jerusalem. Uh, there's a point, brother, to bring out. Uh, there's a photograph that can gotten online of Dwight David Eisenhower wearing a Maltese cross sitting next to Queen Elizabeth, who is a dame of Malta. Dwight David Eisenhower was a knight of Malta. Yes, he, he was. was involved in the very organization to cover up the actual purpose of World War II, and that was an inquisition. Yes, I was told this, that he was a knight of Malta by one of my former advisors who was in Air Force Intelligence in the 1970s, and he said that he's seen a full-length picture of Eisenhower in his garb of the Knights of Malta. But indeed, uh, Victor, you brought out many, many important personages. And uh, please tell us, oh, and I'm so glad you mentioned the meaning of the SS. I'm so glad you mentioned about Eisenhower removing the statues of the Virgin Mary in the concentration camps. And you know, there's a, a series of videos called the Shoah. And in the Shoah, it talks about uh, Chelmo. When they were rounding up the Jews in Poland, they were rounding them up in the Catholic Church. And they were taking all their clothes and everything, and then they sent them out to the gas vans to get van, uh, gassed. Well, that so, was, that was the, uh, uh, Ante Pavlik, the leader of the Ustashi killers. 
he's a very... Yeah, that was, that was just us, yeah. The, the, yeah, and... Choma he, was important. He has a... There was a scene in our, our script about him meeting with... Uh, being thanked by uh, Pacelli uh, and having meetings, you know, at the, at the Vatican. Uh, and uh, w- w- the, the most important... You talk about the personages. The, 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 the one issue here that I think is very powerful is uh, Vladimir Letachowski. Oh, my gosh. Please, please. He... Uh, did away with Pope um, the, the, the Pope before uh, uh, Pius Pius XI mm-hmm. and, and the, he was poisoned in 1939 poisoned, yeah. but he, they also took his uh, a dictum that he wrote which is that the church should be more open to accept other faiths and 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 uh, he, he wrote this uh, a papal bull that he wrote and uh, it was given. It was uh, there's a scene where Ledechowski comes and takes it away from Facelli, completely rewrites it, and uh, the, the world will never know it existed because they kept it. They kept it away, and this is a this is a absolute, absolutely true fact. As a matter of fact, uh, they found it on the desk there when when Facelli died. They found it on his desk. You know the revised. You mean Pius XI? Pius XI. Yeah, Pius XI. Yeah, yes. and uh, and he wanted peace. You know, and he wanted, he didn't want this hatred, so he, they, uh, right. they, they did away with him. But I have a, I have a book on that, that particular, mm-hmm. uh-huh. and Levitowski did squelch that, because yeah, he, he couldn't have, yes, excuse me, go ahead. No, that, that was it, he, he, he squelched it, and there, there are characters in this script that, that tell the story, but you know, in the, in the annals of when you say a movie based on a true story, uh, ninety, you know, like eighty percent of it. When you see it, even if it says based on a true story, is is, is so dramatized and so Hollywoodized. But in this case, you know, I actually did the research on the people that said what they said, and it's in the script. <laughs> you know, I mean, there there are comments from uh, the the first Roman wo- Jewish survivor of the death camps. She says. Uh, I came back from Auschwitz on my own. I lost my mother, two sisters, and one brother. Pius the Twelfth could have warned us about what was going to happen. We might have escaped from Rome and joined the partisans. He played right into the German hands. It all happened right under his nose. But he was an anti-Semitic pope, a pro-German pope. He didn't like a single. He didn't take a single risk. And when they say the pope is like Jesus Christ, it is not true. He did not save a single child. And that's sure. her words. And she gives. Sure. So Good for her. This and, and you know, Pius XII, yeah. he uh, he was trained by a past Jesuit general, Francis Xavier Warts, and he got all his uh, hatred for the right there from the top Jesuits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, look, I, I bring this up and I make it very clear in the story, the book, and all that this is still called the Lambert Chronicles, and I'm trying to hold out Warren as the the, the hero, his wife. Certainly, his grandson that that brought all this forward to us, but I needed to show what was going on at the time that this man was speaking forward, and and that's why I make so much reference to the Jesuits and I'm trying to tell the, the public when they leave the theater that look, you know, uh, all holy innocents, you know, we we we're, we're 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 led to believe that these people were all holy innocents, and it, we got we got so much to tell folks about what happened. You know, and we our, our our kids in school don't learn this about the Holocaust. They learn what oh, was Hitler. What was Hitler? Hitler had accomplices. You know, accomplices. <laughs> and yeah. and people they never tell you Hitler. Hitler was a Roman Catholic. Yeah. They never tell you he was ex, never excommunicated. No. They never tell you that uh, he was given a um, a high requiem mass in Spain, mm-hmm. as reported by uh, Edmund Paris in his. Work, right. the secret history of the Jesuits. They never tell you any of that. Right. He remained a Catholic to the day he died. He was an Austrian. He hated the Germans. Mm-hmm. That's why he betrayed them on the Eastern Front, made sure they would lose to the Russians to annihilate what 91,000 German Protestant Lutherans of Prussia who were sent east mm-hmm. to be massacred. Now, he was an evil, wicked man, and he was also in cahoots with that other Jesuit, Heinrich Himmler, Himmler. Whose, uncle, whose father was a tutor to the Wittelsbach dynasty there in Bavaria, and the Wittelsbach dynasty was overseen by Pacelli when he was there setting up a concordat with Bavaria in 1929. No, isn't that interesting? Is it, mm. do you, have you ever uh, uh, put the 
Jesuit oath that they all, to this day, have to take to be Jesuits. Put that alongside of the protocols of the learned elders of Zion <laughs> and the Masonic oath, and they read the same. That's right. Well, I show my book. Actually, I quote from uh, mm -hmm. who wrote uh, Behind the Dictators in 1942. He's an ex-Roman Catholic priest and Irishman. Mm -hmm. And he says right there in the book that the Jesuits wrote the protocols. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, there was, there was a, a, German, a German Jesuit. I, I don't know his name now, but I have it in my, uh, I have it in my notes. Oh, Victor? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Victor, are you aware that the fourth degree oath of the Knight of, Knights of Columbus is identical, almost identical word for word? Oh, sure, yeah. No, I'm, they were, yeah, they were, they were I, yeah, Knights of, Knights of Columbus. I confronted a neighbor of mine who's a fourth degree Knight of Columbus who mm -hmm. denies you. Know, I, I handed it right to him, right mm -hmm. from the congressional record and from Eric's book. I said, the public record. Mm -hmm. Did you take this oath? Oh, I never took that oath. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I've never seen this before. This is nothing like the deal I took. Mm -hmm. And yet he's a multi-millionaire. Just got done oh, buying sure. about a half a million dollars worth of land. Him and his <laughs> knighthood buddies uh, got together and in public and discussed all of this uh, the summer before they did it. Mm -hmm. And uh, all around me, I'm surrounded by them. And you know, I'm three miles away from the former mausole mausoleum church, uh, St. Patrick's in Clifford, Charles Coughlin, the Bring him Adolf up. Hitler, right. and who became the head of the Shrine of the Little Flower uh, right. off of the 12-mile road in, in Royal Oak. Right, right. I, I, he's in the script. He's in, I'm just oh. going to bring him up to you. He's, he got Coughlin in the script. Good for you. Oh, yeah. He's, he's, I just he's, found he's, this he's out there. four he's days there. ago. Nobody Victor. talks about him. He, He's there. He's, he, he, he held... Meetings at the at, at the Yankee Stadium and at the uh, New York Giants Stadium, uh, Ebbets Field, and, and Brooklyn Stadium in New York. He was that he was a radio. He was on the radio. And, yeah, he, and, he's, he's known as the father of hate radio, and he is the one that blamed the Jews for the Great Depression. Oh yeah, but he right. used to carry with him not the Bible, but he carried the he carried the protocols of the learned elders of Zion. Even after <laughs> it was determined that the whole thing was a fraud, he kept it with him in his hands. It's, you've got to read this. <laughs> It's, nobody's ever told yeah. the story yeah. about this this guy. It, you know, it, it, it is amazing. How, and it, you know that Pacelli was told about him and waited and waited and did nothing until finally he came to send somebody to shut him up. You know, because the pressure was getting so great on him. You know, that, he that, uh, that, the newspaper here in the county that had the report about this 125 year celebration. Uh -huh. of This mausoleum over here, three miles from us. Uh huh. Uh, um, they had it in there that his controversial radio broadcast, but not saying one word in that newspaper what he said in his broadcast. Oh, no. Broadcast. No. Oh, wow. Well, gentlemen, I want to thank you for being on today. Thank well, you, thank Victor, you, for joining us. Thank You're welcome to come back anytime you want to, my friend. All right. Well, let's and uh, hopefully there's someone listening that will want to finance this effort, and it would be a wonderful time to do it since the Jesuits have paid out about $1 billion in damages to their victims and their pedophile suits. So, anyway, thank you, gentlemen, for being on. Victor Perillo and the Walt Williams. Lord bless you, gentlemen. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. For the Eric John Fels, Biblical Truth and History and Prophecy, thanking you for tuning in today. I have a book, Vatican Assassins, Wounded in the House of My Friend. Follow me on Twitter if you wish. Please go to the store, purchase store, that would be helpful to you. Please pray for me 60 seconds a day that we might have things like this come to the forefront. Somebody's been praying and the Lord's been answering your prayers and we have victory on today. So praise God. Uh, pray for uh, Nicholas Arthur and Liberty Radio Live that the Lord would continue to sustain his ministry there with his broadcasts. As this is the only outlet, I believe, in the entire country for truth. Uh, any alternative radio stations are given over to blaming the Jews for everything. And, of course, we are blaming the right men, the Jesuit order, and their court Jews working for them. Lastly, please spend time in the Word of God, the AV 1611, that your mind might be transformed. I trust those of you who are listening have been saved by the grace of God, have believed the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died for your sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried and rose again according to the scriptures in glory, to set things right, to make the crooked path straight, to make the earth his footstool, and to rule with a rod of iron for a thousand years over the nations. Praise God. And those of us who have been saved by the grace of God will participate in that government and we will behold him in his beauty as he sits on the throne of David. Amen. 
Well, thank you for tuning in. And may the Lord bless you. And may the Lord bless Victor with his play. And, and all of you who are seeking to expose the Jesuit papacy as our friend, uh, Walt, Walt, uh, Mr. Lambert, Warren Lambert, that judge at Nuremberg.